Welcome to the ASCAP Cafe today, guys. Um, you have a record coming out in two weeks, but what I want to know is when you guys got together, when did you know that you wanted to be a band together? Well, we uh, right the minute we got together, actually. <laughs> um, Gary, and I, Gary and I wrote together for a record that I made for Target. And in the process, we talked about being a band early on, but we never really acted on it. And then uh, I was making a children's record for Disney, and I called him and I said, I want to do that band thing, and I want it. I, I think we need a, a third. We need a girl, strong writer, strong singer, and I have a feeling you know who it is. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. <laughs> First on the list. You're done, right? First on the list, sitting, <laughs> sitting on a couch next to me. That was a really good move on your part. And so Kenny flew into Nashville and he said, let's see how this works out. Let's see what happens. And we sat down to write a song. Mm -hmm. And the minute we started singing and writing, it was just, it was a band. It was a band. Yeah. And, and there's so many talented s songwriters on top of great singers in Nashville. How did you end up on the top of the list? And, and basically, what do you guys, <laughs> uh, like, tell, tell, like, tell me all about, why because you? you guys have, yeah, what, tell, me, tell me about you. Um, but you guys have all had, you know, amazing solo careers in your own right. Um, it, how did you, how do you just, uh, for people who are in Nashville right now, how do you, kind of show up on each other's you, radars. You, you do your job, you do your thing, and you do it well, and people notice you, and you form friendships in camps. You kind of like make your own thing happen, is how yeah, I see it. Over the years, you know, you play with everybody in town, and the ones that really impress you, you, you know, sort of stick away in the back of what I laughingly refer to as my brain. And uh, <laughs> over the That's years, <laughs> yeah. Um, over the years, I've just, you know, I, I've written with her, I, I've sung, she had a record deal, I sang on her record and wrote songs with her. It, you know, it really, there wasn't really any other, I, I didn't have any other choice. <laughs> Wait, that didn't really, that's not right. how I imagine, well, well, I didn't have any She choice. poisoned you and forced it out yes. of you. Worse, she married me. <laughs> that's coercion in the first that degree. That takes all yeah, choice yeah. away. Yeah. I understand. Um, and, and so your next stop after this Grand Ole Opry, um, there's a actually, lot of... Actually, our next stop is the inauguration. <laughs> and then Al the Franken's inauguration. Al Franken, his party at the inauguration, and then we're playing the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, okay. and then the Grand Ole Opry. I may have heard of <laughs> m some of these. I don't know. And the, and the, oh, Jay Leno, he is a comedian, yes? No, <laughs> See, we were hoping, but it's actually Frank Leno. He's got this cable thing on <laughs> Channel 9. But it's kind of bowling attention. music, <laughs> but, it, but it's, I hear it's very, very, very popular. Yeah. The kids love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was listening to your album on the way over here, and there's, um, it seems that there's a kind of a popularity to having a group versus popularity of having a solo career in Nashville. Do you feel like there's kind of a wax and wane of, of having kind of the group dynamic versus going solo? Hmm. I think there can be. I think it's it's probably trends and fashions. You know, if the group's been away, if people haven't been subjected to groups for a long period of time, then that's going to be the next thing that comes back. You know, P harmony never goes away really, and melodies never really go away, but they can disappear for a while. And neither do you. <laughs> and I won't go away either. <laughs> you know, if we hadn't gotten her in a band and we'd just been a duo, I'd have Wax, and, Wax and Wayne would have been a great next. <laughs> I'd be wax, you'd be waiting. It's not too okay. late. <laughs> um, and here at Sundance, obviously, the focus is on film. Kenny, you have a long storied history with working within film, but as you guys were working together, did you think in cinematic terms, were there certain kind of visuals that really inspired you? I, I think uh, often uh, there are visuals accompanying a song because when we're writing, we have to know who the speaker is, who's the singer, or what, is it the character in the song, or is it a narrator, you know? So you gradually build a a scenario of what the story is and why it's getting to whatever pivotal lines you want. And I tend to get a lot of my story ideas for songs from visuals from a film. Gotcha. And, and any favorite films in the past couple years that have really kind of inspired something out of you? Gosh, well, Goodwill Hunting gave me a hit song. <laughs> I, I got a line out of that, and Keith Urban recorded that. How about got, you guys? I got uh, Leap of Faith, a record I made years ago um, from the closing scene of uh, Indiana Jones and the was it the Crus something, the Crusades? <laughs> the something, something, the last crusade, something, guys? That's all right. We, that, they'll, they'll hear about that later, and you're going to get an earful. Um, and, and as far as um, y you guys have played uh, music together, you know, in a capacity of, of backup and then as a full group, um, what is, how would you describe your entertainment style as a crew together for this record? 
You know, we became a band before we ever stepped foot on a stage together. Yeah. <laughs> we just kind of had a lot of faith in each other. Yeah. We didn't know what it was going to be we like. Didn't. We didn't know what, how we were going to be when we got on stage. Mm -hmm. But when we get on stage, uh, we've been doing it for long enough that we just really, really have fun, and we try to bring the audience in on that fun, and we're real confident in the material and in, in how we're going to sing it, and that gives us a certain comfort level to have, a, you know, to make jokes and, and, yeah, and fool around and we're just it's a very relaxed um, multi-faceted evening you know um, the first show we played was at the Ryman mm -hmm. no no the first show was the Rutledge, the Rutledge. Rutledge. Yeah. and um, we'd never been on stage together before that and after the show I went up to Gary and I said did you know she was that good <laughs> <laughs> and he says I didn't know well she's always been in back yeah, yeah. <laughs> And now everybody is up front, and you don't even have to wear coordinating outfits. I think this works pretty well. Right. <laughs> um, and what are we going to see here today at the ASCAP Cafe? And is is there kind of a complete? Is there a big band behind you backing on your no, forthcoming no, it's just tour? No, the three of us. Oh, there's, we we will have a band with us when we tour because our, our record is uh, electric and acoustic. But uh, here today, it's just the three of us doing what we do when we write. So it's going to be songs from our new record. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And um, what comes to mind a little bit from from everybody's still reflecting on 2012, certain trends, things that worked out. Um, I was thinking about Lionel Richie, how he put out um, a Nashville themed record, um, and, and it was a huge hit. And I was I was wondering for you, Kenny, um, what the if you feel like this is this is a natural step for you, especially for people who have had multiple eras in, in their songwriting. Did this just feel very natural, and do you feel like that that is kind of a trajectory you're going to see some of your peers taking? You're assuming that this is a Nashville record, <laughs> and that uh, may or may not be true. This is a Blue Sky Writers record, and it is what it really is. I know you hear that all the time, but it is what it is, and we're not trying to be Nashville. We're not trying to be top anything. We're just making the music that we make and hoping that something surfaces. And we're doing it on our own record label, so we can kind of decide how we want to go creatively. I was going to ask about that. You guys have worked with different kind of producers, different kind of label situations, things like that. Talk about the kind of, what, what does it mean to be kind of free to do your own thing in this industry? Well, at one point, you know, we'll sit around and we'll sort of have a band meeting and we'll go, well, what happens if we, you know, take it this far and then that next thing doesn't happen. And then we have to calm down and go, well, we're not going to drop us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not like the old days where you got to worry about, we have, you know, for yeah, the first right. time in my life, I have no performance anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> when you can't, I mean, if you can fire yourself, but you'll rehire you the next day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just That's to right. teach me a lesson. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. Good luck at your performance today. I think you're going to get it together. You know, that first performance was probably nerve wracking, but it sounds like you're yeah. pretty good, so. Yeah. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitFix on Twitter or visit HitFix.com.